in the last lecture we created a user entity using which we created a table in the postgres server database it is also possible to configure the table columns from the entity class itself let's learn how we can do that here in this type orm documentation for column options you can see how we can specify configuration for each column for that to this at column decorator we pass an object and there in that object we specify some column options and the first option which we use is type option this type option here it specifies the type of the column in the database so when we are working with postgres database we do not have a string type there for storing string values in a table column we have where care or n where care okay so using this type we specify the data type for a table column in the database so in the database for example for this first name i want to store a text value basically a string value but in the database we do not have a string data type instead there we have n where care or where care data type so in the database what should be the data type for that column that we specify in our entity class using this type option okay and along with this type option you can also set other options like the length the maximum length allowed for that whether that field is unique or not and many other options so if you scroll down here you will see a list of all the options which you can set on a column so for example as i said you can set the type the name of the column what should be the maximum length then whether it should be nullable or not whether it is a primary column or not okay you can see the list of all the options which you can set here now what i'm going to do is let's go back to vs code to our user entity class there i'm not going to add any extra options any configuration for this id field because this primary generated column this decorator will take care of making this id column as a primary column and also auto generating the value for this id column there is nothing else i want to do here all right so here for the first name first of all i am going to specify the type the type should be where care okay first name should not be nullable so i'll set this nullable to false and here i also want to set a maximum length because since we are using where care we need to specify the maximum length for that where care so that we can do using length property and here i'm going to set the maximum length as 100 and let's also check our create user dto for the first name there we have specified the minimum length but we have not specified a maximum length so let's also go ahead and let's specify a max length so that our dto and our entity class is in sync so let's specify the max length and i'm going to set the max length as 100 okay if you want you can also give a custom error message for this but i'm going to keep it like this and i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to set the max length for last name also to 100 for email also 200 and for the password also 200 and let's set it for gender also and for the gender i'll set it to maybe 10 okay let's save the changes here so let me copy this configuration object and let me go and let me specify the same configuration for last name also i'll specify the same configuration for gender also now gender can be null so as you can see in the dto i have specified the gender as optional field so here the gender can be null so i'll set nullable to true and the length to 10 because that's what we have specified in the dto as you can see okay then for the email let's specify the same configuration so email should not be nullable it is of type where care maximum length we are allowing as 100 and i also want this email to be a unique field no two users should have the same email so for that i'm going to set this unique option here and i'll set it to true so in the database when this user table will be created there this email field it will be a unique field it will not allow duplicate values in the email column 
and then let me also go and let me specify the same configuration for password also so password should also not be null so nullable is false and the maximum length which we are allowing is 100 let's save the changes here and i'll highly recommend you to to go through this documentation and if required bookmark this documentation here you can see the list of all the available column options which you can use based on your requirement in our example we have used a very few like type nullable length and unique but there are other options which is also available here and which can be useful for your requirement and there is one more thing which you need to understand here when we are specifying the type of the column so for example if i go to our application there for each of the column we are specifying the type here we are using varchar now this varchar type is supported in postgresql but it does not mean that this varchar is supported in all other databases two databases can have completely different data types which they support there may be some common types but there will also be some data types which is supported in one database but not in other database so for example if i go to this documentation here you can see the column types and if i scroll down here you can see the column types basically the data types supported in postgres database and here you can see the data type supported in mysql and maria database you see in case of postgres database we have a lot more data types than what we have in mysql so if you're planning to switch your database in future you need to make sure that the data type which you are using in your entity class it is common for both the databases so if you know in advance that you might need to switch to another database in the future then you should choose and use the common data types from the existing database which you are using and the one which you want to switch to otherwise the switching between the database will become a tedious task because for example let's say i'm using this varchar with the postgres sql but in the future i'm switching to another database where the varchar is not supported so in that case i'll have to go to each of my entity file I will have to change this type from varchar to some other data type which is supported in the new database which i am switching to and that will be a very tedious task but if you don't want to switch from one database to another database then there is no problem okay so make sure that if you are planning to switch to another database in future for example if you want to switch from postgresql to mysql then use only those data types which is common in both mysql and postgres all right so in this way we have defined the configuration for each of the columns in our table so we have defined some configuration for the first name column in the table its type should be varchar it should not be nullable and the length of it should be 100 and we have done the same thing for other columns also okay so for example for the email field we have also added an extra option that the email should have a unique value it should be a unique field so with these changes let's save this file and now if i go to app module since we have this synchronize turned on we have set it to true what this synchronize will do is it is going to synchronize our user entity with the user table in the database so now let's go to our database and here we have the tables in there we have our user table if i expand the columns here you will see that we have these columns let me open one of the columns here so i'll simply right click and click on properties it will open the properties of that column so the column name is first name and we have also defined some constraints so if i go to the definition you will see that now the length is set to 100 because that's what we have specified in our entity if you see for the first name we have set its length to 100 so that has been also set here then if i go to constraints you see first name should not be null so that has been checked here but if i open gender column and if i open its properties and if i go to constraints you will see that not null is turned off because for the gender property we have specified nullable as true If you see for the gender we have specified null label as true so our entity is completely synced 
with the user table which we have in our database and this synchronization is because of the type ORM as well as by turning on this synchronized property all right so in this lecture we learned how we can add configuration options for a column in the entity class so that the same configuration is set in the database table this is all I wanted to cover in this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.